Okay, welcome to class today. By this point, you should have done your starter, gone through it, and now you are watching this video to get the notes for transformations of a quadratic graph. So this is what I want you to title your notes. And then here's our learning target. It says, I can identify the different transformations of a quadratic graph when changing the different values of a quadratic function. Okay, so remember a quadratic function is the function that has the x squared. Okay, and the graph looks like this. So what we are doing, the whole point of this lesson that we're going to start today, and then we will finish it on Tuesday, next time I see you, okay, will be on how we move this graph. How? Because sometimes it ends up in different places of the graph. Sometimes it's wider. Sometimes it's narrower. Sometimes it's flipped. Sometimes it's facing upwards. So the whole point, the whole thing we're trying to figure out is how it moves and what makes it move. Okay? So hopefully you have this written down in our learning target. So we are going to start with this. Okay, I need you to write this down. Our parent function of a quadratic is this f of x equals x squared. Okay, this is my most basic quadratic function. Okay, it is as plain and as boring as it could possibly be. So we are going to graph it and see what it looks like. And I'm going to use my calculator to help us. So make sure you have a calculator. If you don't have a calculator, pause the video, go grab a calculator and come back. Okay, well, we're going to graph it. So I'm going to go to y equals, and I'm going to type in x squared into y equals, and then click graph. Okay, so it pops up. Here is my quadratic function, my parent function. Okay, in order to fill out this table, I'm going to press second table so I can let it help me. I'm going to find negative 2 for x. Okay, if you come here, I'm going to come down. Negative 2. When x is negative 2, y is 4. So I'm going to put 4 right here. Okay, when x is negative 1, y is 1. I'm going to put 1 right there. When x is 0, y is 0. 0. When x is 1, y is 1. When x is 2, y is 4. Okay, so I'm going to then put these points on my graph. Okay, this is my parabola. This is my parent function. It's the most boring parent function, the boring quadratic we could possibly think of. The vertex is at 0, 0. The axis of symmetry is at x equals 0. My y-intercept is 0. My x-intercept is 0. Okay, my range is y is greater than or equal to 0. Everything is 0, which means it's just pretty boring. This, however, is what we are going to use as like our home base throughout this lesson. Okay, we are going to compare everything to this function. Okay, that means that if something is over here, okay, we have another parabola over here, we're going to compare that it went to the right and then it went down. Okay, or if it's over here that it went to the left, okay, we're going to always compare it. So in your calculator throughout this whole lesson, okay, you should leave, oops, leave that as an x, do that. You should leave this x squared here, okay? Do not erase this x squared because I want to compare everything to this function, okay? So now, before we can get started, okay, on this, this is a, another form of a quadratic. We call it vertex form. Okay, we already have our standard form, f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. This is called standard form. Vertex form is another way to write it. Okay, so you should be writing all of this down while I am explaining it. Okay, vertex form is just another way to write a quadratic. I still have an x squared in it, okay, but instead I have this a number 
which is actually the same A number as here, and it's always going to be in front of the X, usually outside of the parentheses. I have this H, which is being added or subtracted inside the parentheses, and then we have the K, which is my constant, which is outside the parentheses. Okay, we are, between today and on Tuesday, we are going to investigate how these three numbers here change my graph, what they do to my parent function, okay? Because my parent function right now has none of these numbers, okay? So when I add these numbers in, we want to figure out how it changes this graph, okay? So all of the functions we're going to be looking at today are going to be in this form, okay? Today we're going to worry about H and K, and A, we'll worry about that next week. So we're honestly going to kind of forget about the A today and really just look at functions that look like this. Okay, so we are going to start with this. Okay, we're going to start with this function, f of x equals x squared minus 2. We want, so I have my parent function here. Okay, we want to see how does adding this negative 2 change my graph. Okay, so kind of think about it, maybe make a prediction. Is it going to move it? Is it going to make it wider? Is it going to make it narrower? Is it going to flip it? What is it going to do? Okay, and let's figure it out. I'm going to come here. I'm going to go to y equals, and I'm going to leave x squared. So I'm going to come down to my second one, and I'm going to type in x squared minus 2. Okay, we're going to compare it. I still have my parent function. We're going to compare it and see what happens. So if we see my parent function, or my x squared, has now been shifted down 2. Okay, my vertex is, to, is down here now at 0, comma, negative 2. And each one of my points has gone down 2. Okay, so I can draw my new graph. So this negative 2 here shifted it down 2. Okay, now that's going to be pretty consistent. If I change it and I do f of x equals x squared minus 5, it's going to go down 5. If I do f of x equals x squared minus 12, it's going to go down 12. And you could even plug more into your calculator. If I do x squared minus 6, I can come see. And I can see it's all going to come. It's going to shift down to 6. Nothing else is happening. It's still facing the same way. It's not going left to right. It's not getting wider or narrower. Okay? It is just going down 6. That's all that's changing. Okay, so this k out here, okay, in my new function, okay, this k, when it's negative, shifts it down 2. Okay, if we do the opposite then, and I'm going to change it to a positive, and I'm going to add a positive 1, what do we think is going to happen? Okay, make a guess, and we're going to come here. And I'm going to plug it in, x squared plus 1. So that's my parent function, the blue one. And my second one, if we see, it's just kind of going up 1. My vertex now is at 0, 1. And every single point is going up 1. Okay, so this is shifted up 1. Okay, that's going to hold true. If I do x squared plus 7, that's going to go up 7. If I'm going to do f of x equals x squared plus 13, it's going up 13. Okay, so this k outside of my parentheses here, when it says how does the k affect the graph, okay, this is this function Okay, if I have this k here, well, when you have a plus k in the function, the parabola will, be, will shift up k. 
k units. Okay, so this is a plus 4. It's going up 4 units. When you have a minus k in the function, the parabola will shift down k units. Okay, so if you need to, pause and write this down. Make sure you get it all in your notes. Okay, so this is the k. This k right here, whatever number is being added or subtracted is telling us how many units it is going up or how many units it is going down. Okay, good. Make sure you have all of these notes in your written down in your notebook. Okay, now we're going to move and we're going to talk about this h. And we're going to see how does this h now affect your graph. Okay, well we're going to do this one. Now, notice how since it's inside the parentheses, it's a little bit different. Okay, so here's my parent function, and we're going to see how does my parent function change when I have this minus 2 inside the parentheses. Okay, take a second, make a guess. Okay, and then we're going to type it into our calculator. Okay, you should be doing this with me to get the practice in your calculator. So type in, go ahead, type in in your calculator with me, parentheses x minus 2, Close the parentheses, squared. And I'm going to press enter. Okay, that blue one is my parent function. And we see the next one has shifted it over to the right, 2. So my vertex is now here at 0, 2. Every other point, this goes to the right, 2. This goes to the right, 2. This goes to the right, 2. This point goes to the right, 2. And they're going to intersect. And this one goes to the right, too. Okay, so this minus 2 right here has shifted to the right, too. Okay, and that's going to hold true every time. If I have f of x equals x minus 5 squared, this is going to the right, 5. If I have f of x equals x minus 9 squared, this is going to the right, 9. Okay, so when it's inside the parentheses and it's negative, I am shifting to the right. Okay, let's try this one. Okay, now it's still inside the parentheses, but this time it is positive, and we're going to see how it is shifting in this direction. Okay, so I still have my parent function, because this is still always, always, always what I am comparing it to. Okay, so I'm going to come here, and I'm going to put in x squared, and then I'm going to come over here, and you're going to do x plus 1 squared. Okay, and I'm going to press graph. And we can see that this, my parent function, has now shifted over to the left one. Okay, so each dot has now gone to the left one. Okay, I'm going to connect my dots. And we'll see. Okay, so this h value inside has shifted to the left one. Okay, and this is going to hold true every time. So if I have x plus 5 squared, I'm going to the left, 5. If I have f of x equals x plus 12 squared, I'm going to the left, 12. Okay, so let's write a rule for these notes here. Okay, so when it says, how does the h affect my graph? This is f of x equals a times x plus h squared plus k. So we're now talking about this h inside the parentheses. And we are wondering, how is this h affecting my graph? Okay, so when it says, when you see a plus h in the parentheses, the parabola will shift. Okay, when it's a plus, it's going to be opposite of what you may think. So it's actually going to shift to the left, h units. OK, 
Okay, and then when it says when you see a minus h in the parentheses, the parabola will shift to the right h units. Okay, make sure you have these written down in our, your notes. Okay, so in that way you can use this for your homework tonight, and we will talk about it next week. You are expected to have this all written down in your notes. Okay, now we don't know about the A. We're going to talk about the A next week. Okay, so you can honestly forget about the A right now. Okay, and just know that this K outside the parentheses, that's moving it either up or down, depending on whether it's positive or negative. This H right here is moving it either left or right, depending on whether it's positive or negative. Okay, now that we know this, okay, if I give you a problem like this, Okay, where I say, okay, here you have your parent function, and then here I have a new function, and we want to talk about how is it shifting as I go from here to here. You are using this to help you, okay? I need to see, I have this minus 2 right here, and you need to ask yourself, well, is that an H or is that a K? Since it is outside the parentheses, it's a K. Okay, which means that I'm go either going to move up to or I am going to move down to. Well, since it's a negative 2, you are shifting down 2. I don't move any left or right because I don't have a K. Okay, there's nothing in here written with the X value. So it's only moving down 2. Okay. So, in your notes, kind of by yourself, kind of think through the same thing. I'll give you a couple seconds and decide which way is it shifting. Is it shifting left, right, up, or down? Six. Okay, so you should get, since it's inside the parentheses, it's either going to move left or right. And since it's negative, remember the left and right is when it's opposite of what you may think. Okay, so it's actually going to shift to the right 6. Okay. Good. Try this one. Okay, here you have 2, so you should have 2 shifts that you should write down. I'll give you a couple seconds to think about it. Okay, so you should get, okay, here you have the plus one, which is inside the parentheses. Okay, so this plus 1, so it's either moving it to the left or to the right. And since it's positive, this is shifted to the left 1. Okay, since it's a positive, and that moves it to the left. Okay, I'll even write positive, negative. Positive, negative. Okay, and then this minus 6. That's this K out here. It's outside the parentheses, and since it's negative, it's going down. So shifted down 6. Good. Okay, do one last one. Do this one, last one. Okay, this one, inside the parentheses, this negative 4. Okay, it's inside the parentheses here, so it's going left, right, and since it's negative, that is right. So shifted right 
4. Okay, here, this plus 7, it's outside, okay, so that is up, since it's positive, so it's shifted up 7. There we go. Okay, so we can do similar things with the graphs, okay? If I have the graph and I know the graph and I can see here's my parent function and here's my new function, we can describe the transformations. When it says to describe, that simply means write it out in words. So like right here, as I'm starting at this point and I'm going to this point, this is shifting right two, okay, because I started here and I go to the right, one, two. Now, if I know that I'm going right two, I can write my function, okay, just like I did here, okay. I can take this information and I can put it into the right spots, okay. Well, if I'm going right two, that's going to be my H. I don't know, I'm not going up or down, so you're not going to put anything in for k. So I'm going to do f of x equals parentheses x. So I'm going to come here to h, okay, right 2, okay. So I'm going to go negative 2, so x minus 2 squared, okay. If you want, I could come to my calculator, and I could type that into my calculator, x minus 2 squared, and I could see, here's my parent function, which is that one, and here's my new function, which is that one, and I could see that they match, so I wrote my equation right, okay? This one here, I could see that it's just going up 1, so shifting up 1, okay? Which means when I go to write my equation, I'm going to plug 1 in for k, and since I'm going up, it's going to be a positive one. You don't need to plug anything in for h because I'm not going left or right at all. So I'm going to just plug it in as x squared. I don't need to put a parenthesis because I don't have the h to plug in. And then just plus 1. Okay, so I'll let you do this last one. I'll give you a couple of seconds to do this last one, and then we will be done. Okay, so you should get two shifts. Okay, I see that I am shifting to the right, one, two, three, four. So shifts right, four. And then also that I'm shifting down, one, two. Okay, and so when I go to write my function, f of x equals parentheses x for h. I'm going to plug in 4. And since I'm going to the right 4, I'm going to plug in a minus 4. Okay, so x minus 4 squared. And then since I'm going down 2, I'm going to plug a 2 in for k. And since I'm going down, I'm going to do a minus 2. So minus 2. And if I wanted to, I could come here, go to y equals, leave my x squared. Okay, I'm going to plug this in. Minus 2. And I can see if my graphs match up. And they do. Good. Okay, so what you are supposed to do now for the rest of the period Go get one of the worksheets from the sub, okay? Use this to help you, okay? Use this exactly to help you. It's written on the board also. Use it to help you. Go through the worksheet. Do it to the best of your ability. Even if you're a little bit wrong, that is okay. Do it to the best of your ability. Finish it. Get it turned in, okay? We'll go over it on, Monday, or on Tuesday, and I'll let you ask any questions that you have. Okay. After you finish the worksheet, you can use your time wisely without talking and getting stuff 
done for other classes or even for my class. Okay, good luck. Be on your best behavior. Have a good day.